Hey guys, it's Vignesh from Code Android. In this video, we'll see about asynchronous programming with Dart. Dart is a single threaded language, which means it can perform only one task at the given point of time, which is not suitable for modern devices because most of the devices which we are using has a processor with multiple cores to perform multiple tasks. In that, using only one core or a thread is not efficient. So, Dart has some option to do multi-threading. When we start a Dart application, it will create something called isolate, which has only one thread inside it, which runs an event loop. This event loop will process all the tasks. It will take the task from two queues, micro task queue and event queue. In this micro task queue, we will have our code in sequence in the form of task and even queue will have the task which is triggered by user input io devices timer and more so event loop gives priority for micro task queue over event queue it will start executing the event queue after completing all the tasks from micro task queue for example we have a code which creates the ui on click of a button, we are showing some dialog. In this case, the code which is creating the UI will be there in micro task queue. So, which will be executed first. When user tap on the button, the action will be kept on the event queue. Now, event loop will be checking both the queue for task. It already executed all the tasks in micro task queue. So, it will take the event queue task and start executing it. Now, we we'll see some of the terminologies used in asynchronous programming in Dart. Future, async and await. First, we'll see about future. Future is used to denote a function will return a particular type of data in future. Async. Async is used to denote this function need to be executed in background. This will be helpful when we want to do some long running process without blocking main thread. So that the code which are there after this function will be executed before completing this async function. This way we can use the available single thread most of the time. If a function returning a value in future, we need to use async keyword for that function. Finally, await is used to wait for the response of the future function. So it won't allow the code which is present after await until the future functions return its result. We'll see about this in code on next video. That's all for this video guys. If you have any doubts, please put it in the comment section. I will try to answer it. Hope you like it. I will see you in my next video. Have a nice day.